Hello there, I'm Aaron from Solace and I'm here to make sure your guaranteed consumers don't lose any data. Okay, so in my last video, we were talking about guaranteed acts in Solace from the publisher side of the equation. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link somewhere up here across my face. Be sure to go and check that out. But today we're gonna be talking about the consumer side. In just one second, I do wanna cover something that I kind of glossed over in the last video, and that's with regards to uh, protocols and APIs and kind of you know synchronous or blocking behavior versus asynchronous or, or streaming behavior. Now, something to keep in mind is that, you know, all of the protocols, all of the messaging protocols that Solus supports, be it MQTT or AMQP 1.0 or, you know, the native SMF, all support asynchronous uh, delivery of acknowledgements for publishers. And this is regardless of whether you're using TCP or WebSockets. But you might say, hey, what about, you know, JMS 1.1? You know, that's a blocking call. But yes, it is. But that's because the, the uh, API specification mandates that that send call, that per persistent send, blocks until the ACK is received from the broker, or throws an exception if the broker sends a NAC. So even though you don't see the ACK or the NAC, uh, it's just, you know, the API is kind of handling that under the covers. Similarly, there's a lot of MQTT APIs out there that kind of hide the fact that there's an ACK uh, or NAC happening, um, you know, so it's kind of up to the API whether they expose that, you need both an API and a protocol that support, uh, you know, the asynchronous delivery of ACKs to really see that kind of ACK or NAC callback kind of uh, mechanism that I described in the last video. So, um, and of course, HTTP 1.1 is a blocking or synchronous protocol. So that's, you're kind of stuck with that until at least Solus comes out with HTTP 2 support. So yeah, now that's enough for the publisher side. Let's get back to consumers. now. Just like the published side, there is two different qualities of service or delivery mode in Solace for consumer applications. There's your direct messaging, which is your fire and forget at most once, where the consumer actually has to be online and subscribed to receive messages. So if the consuming application has disconnected from the broker due to whatever reason, it's going to not receive uh, messages sent as direct. Um, but if you want to make sure that that does happen, you're going to use our persistent or guaranteed quality of service. And this is where the broker will store messages available until the consumer sends the ACK. Now, the way that it works in Solace is for persistent messaging or guaranteed messaging, the consumer will bind or connect to a queue or a topic endpoint and create a flow. A flow is kind of a virtual channel within your connection, uh, and it's upon which you receive all of your guaranteed messages from that particular queue. And the broker is going to hold on to messages in that queue until the consumer sends an explicit act and says, yep, I'm done with that message. Thank you very much. Now, there are two ways of uh, two different modes of sending acknowledgements in Solace. Uh, one is our auto act mode, and this is the default mode, but it's not necessarily the best practice. We don't usually recommend it. Uh, pretty much an act is sent by the API to the broker as soon as the consuming client receives that message. So uh, not the best practice. It's not as safe as client act mode. This is where the client has to explicitly acknowledge each and every message that it receives uh, when it's actually done with it. You know, It can be from any thread. It doesn't necessarily have to be the thread that it received the message on. And this is just a better way of doing it to just to say, yep, I'm done, act that message now. Uh, JMS is a little bit different. I'll just mention it here. Client act mode in JMS is actually a windowed act. So if you've received messages one, two, three, uh, up to 10, 10 messages, uh, and you call act on message number 10, it will actually implicitly acknowledge all the ones that came before. So just a heads up. But if you want that per message ACK behavior that Solace has, there's a special mode in Solace JMS called Sol Client ACK Acknowledgement, and you can kind of set it up that way. But the main thing to keep in mind is do not ACK the message uh, until you are done, you're completely done processing it or storing it or whatever. So let's take a look at a whiteboard type uh, diagram I got set up here. You got your Solace broker because we're doing persistent messaging. You have a queue uh, with some messages in it. You're going to have your consuming application, and you're going to have some downstream 
database or cloud service, or perhaps it's your just your local disk, somewhere where you want to store these data, send these data, and you want Solace to persist it until it's been successfully received by that system. So step one is you know, your consumer is going to receive a message either via the on receive callback if you're doing asynchronous or the receive a method if you're doing synchronous uh, you know, rece uh, reception. Um, you know, maybe the, uh, you know, the client, the consumer is going to uh, do some processing of that message and then it's going to eventually write it or send it onto that downstream system. You know, try to write it to that database, uh, try to send it into that cloud service. And we're just showing one message here, right? So maybe you might be receiving a thousand messages off your queue and sending them into your downstream system is a big batch update. That's fine. Still holds true. But what you're waiting for is that kind of commit successful, that 200 okay, that confirmation from your downstream system that, you know, the, the data has been stored, persisted, and is safe before the consumer then acts each and every message. So at which point, you know, the messages will be deleted off the queue. The, you're telling the broker, yep, I'm done with this message. Get rid of it. So it's only once you're guaranteed that the data is safe and stored somewhere that you act the messages back onto Solace, regardless of whatever that downstream system is. So keep that in mind. Client act mode is the best and don't send the act until it's been stored. All right. Now, in terms of kind of exception handling, things to keep in mind, you know, when you know, running into issues on the consumer side, one thing is that Solace does not have the concept of like a redelivery timer. Um, as long as, you know, that you know, client is connected to the queue, bound to that queue, and that flow still exists, Solace will never redeliver that message to someone else. It'll never send that message again. As long as you are, you know, that consumer is connected, no matter how long it takes, the broker will not send that. And that's today, as of today, which is April 2021. Who knows? Things might change in the future. Um, but as long as, yeah, that client is still there, the broker is not going to uh, re-deliver that message to somebody else. Now, in terms of like kind of typical error handling scenarios that you might run into as a consumer, probably by far the most common is that your downstream system is unavailable. You know, perhaps you're trying to send it to a database that has been taken offline for upgrade, or you're trying to post that into the cloud, or you're trying to do something, and it's just, you can't get it there. There's nothing wrong with the data, and there's nothing wrong with you, the consumer. You just can't send that data down uh, downstream. So the common, you know, thing to do is to just retry. Hopefully, eventually, it'll come back up. You're just going to retry to send that data uh, downstream. Of course, you could run into kind of, uh, you know, some kind of payload schema validation error. You're trying to parse that. Maybe it's malformed. The payload's all wrong. You're throwing exceptions. You know, no matter how many times you try, it's probably still going to keep, uh, you're not able to parse it. This is sometimes what we call a poison pill message or a poison message where it's stuck at the head of the queue. You know, there's nothing you can really do in that regard. So another option could be simply log it to your local file system and carry on, or you could publish it to a special error handling queue. This is the approach that uh, the Spring Cloud Stream binder for RabbitMQ takes, is just publish it somewhere else. And of course, you want to make sure that you know you get that ACK from that downstream publish before you ACK the message back onto Solace, right? But in some cases, you just want to force a redelivery. You want to put that message back onto the queue and hope that maybe some other consumer is going to have a better chance of processing or sending that message uh, than you are. So the way that you do that in Solace today is that you have to close the flow. You have to unbind from the queue. Now, of course, this is essentially, this is a knack. This is you're knacking the message back onto the queue, but not really. This is kind of a much, it's a big hammer because, of, because what you're doing is you're closing the flow. Any other uh, unacknowledged messages that you have received, you know, will also get put back onto the queue and made available for redelivery to other people. So it's not something that you just want to do frivolously. You want to try your best as a consumer to kind of process that message, store that message, do whatever you have to do with that message. It's almost like kind of a last ditch uh, effort. But it will, of course, put the message and uh, whatever unacknowledged messages back onto the queue and made available for redelivery to the next consumer. Now, who the next consumer is kind of depends on your queue's uh, access type. If you're using non-exclusive queue, then, you know, that's kind of an active standby model. Uh, the next consumer will be a standby. He'll get actually a flow active notification. He'll turn on, uh, he'll, he'll, he or she will turn on. And at that point, we'll start receiving all of that data. Um, if you're using a non-exclusive 
uh, style of queue, uh, which is a round robin delivery, then the messages that were unacted by that consumer that closed will be made available for delivery to everybody else. Which means, of course, you're going to have possibly some out of order kind of you know issues there. But that's just the case with you know non exclusive queues anyway, uh, just due to kind of like the parallel or concurrent kind of processing uh, that a load balance kind of delivery mechanism uh, takes into account. So things to keep in mind, right? All right. Now you might say, hey, Aaron, you forgot to talk about you know 80 window sizes. What about transport acts? You know, what about this setting max and act plur flow? or you know read delivery options dmqs there's a bunch of other stuff that yes i don't have time to talk about because this video is already too long so um i'm gonna do a, a part three all right so uh you know subscribe to the solace channel hit that notification bell uh to be sure to like find out when this next video comes out uh come find us on solace community solace.community we hang out there and answer questions all the time uh that's it for me aaron from solace uh thanks a lot for watching and see you next time